Okay, thank you for being here, for inviting me for this some afternoon to talk about an amazing technology, at least for me. It had changed how we develop and how we run applications in the last year. It's an amazing platform, and I would say it's a hidden gem in the cloud. It's awesome how easy it is and how uh, versatile it got. It has so many features, and uh, it works out in almost every situation uh, nowadays for, any, for anything that's HTTP-based. So let's start cloud run the rise of serverless and containerization this talk is brought to you by marton that's me about me i'm a huge stack overflow fan i answer a lot of questions i'm also appointed google developer experts on cloud technologies since 2016 and uh, i'm based in turgumures and i'm doing mostly web web uh, application development backend scalability databases and those kind of uh, things you can find me on martin codox uh, stage name on slideshare and twitter and uh, also on stack or for and github now let's uh, start to screen share and see how uh, this is actually start to look to look together so uh, you will uh, you will find this presentation on slideshare so you are able to actually check it later as well in case some of the examples uh, are helpful for you so what's our agenda for today we are going to see what are serverless pain points how cloud run brings serverless and containers into the cloud, how easy it is to actually work with it, what are the practical use cases, uh, and of course, uh, why we consider that the rise of serverless and containerization was de facto introduced by CloudRun in, uh, uh, in the cloud ecosystem, as uh, it's, it has a great summary of features and so on. So, when we talk about serverless, we need to separate them at least into operational model and programming model. And while most of the folks are, uh, are already knowing that uh, serverless means no infrastructure management, eventually managed security if you use a managed service for it, because nowadays serverless you can run in-house as well and you only pay for usage it's, it's a different concept which uh, could yield to actually benefits if you have an application that suits this kind of uh, model or it's a let's say medium to low application as well when we talk about uh, programming model it's uh, risk based so we need to understand that whatever we deploy it's a service it's important to understand that it's not a function it's a full working service a full working application it's considered even driven but uh, that part of the cloud run is actually automation of the cloud so there are a bunch of events that you can automate the cloud and uh, trigger cloud run services for it and it's open the open is very important to understand there is no let's say vendor lock-in there is no constraints of the libraries there is no SDKs, and it's something that uh, you assemble, you build it, and you ship it to the cloud itself. When uh, there was a, let's say, a study done by Brett at uh, Serverless Days Milano, uh, these pain points concluded that uh, Serverless needs to learn from it, and this was three years ago. What we see here is that cold starts are um, among the most frequent problem that people actually have with serverless technology. And most of it uh, is there is the vendor lock-in. And I can also organizing tracking functions, which I keep frequently asking, like, how do I keep up with uh, those kind of things? So these are actually the top of the pain points in the serverless world. And why I'm showing this to you? I'm showing this because 
these pain points were addressed when Cloud Run was launched in, in 20, 2020, I think. And it addresses a lot of these pain points. And let's see how and why it's a new solution for the cloud. Now, we need to talk about containers, but I won't introduce them because uh, the attendees already should know about containers. They should know what they are. Essentially, it means that containers are for any language. You can assemble any library, even a binary, and it has an ecosystem of base images. So essentially, you can build whatever you want in a container. And why I'm mentioning container to this? Because Cloud Run actually brings serverless to containers, which means that so far we have this concept about being, a, let's say, a virtual machine set up, and there you deploy your application. Then there was a platform as a service uh, on the market. Then there was cloud function or Lambda functions on the market where you had a function it. And now Cloud Run lets you to run your full application, your full code source or folder from the PC into the cloud, and it launches the container in a serverless way. So it means that it actually you can go to production in seconds. So whenever you have built your container, you just signal it that this is a service and there is a new URL for that. It automatically kicks in and it serves the traffic that's pointed to it. It's natively serverless, so it doesn't have a framework. It's not, a, you don't need to have any library. There is no, let's say, complex networking routes. Uh, there is no capacity planning. So it's actually very, very uh, easy to work with. And one experience where you want it. And where you want it, we need to mention it that Cloud Run is also part of Google Cloud Platform, but as a native initiative, you can run inside your Kubernetes cluster as your own, let's say, serverless environment ecosystem to run your application. This presentation will focus mostly on the managed Cloud Run service, which is part of the Google Cloud uh, Platform. Essentially, I already mentioned that in the early days of serverless, they were functions, then there was App Engine. And nowadays, based on container, there is Cloud Run, which is great for everything, which is HTTP and mostly, let's say, uh, front-end pages for websites, back-end uh, API uh, server serving of, of a mobile application, workloads that you want to do, per task, per operation, on a schedule based, uh, this kind of operation. Now, let's see a demo because uh, that's actually the most important stuff to actually see how easy it is to actually deploy it. For demo, I'm going to use VS Code. Let me zoom in here in order to have it available. And uh, for VS Code, I've set up here a couple of important points. First of all, uh, in the status bar, there is my GCP project. Uh, this is an extension. It's called GCP Projects feature. And you could, for example, install it uh, on your VS Code uh, platform. Essentially, it's, it's a plugin that lets you to view the project inside the status bar and then be able to quickly change between it. It's a plugin created by me, so I'm featuring that as well in this session for, for this uh, for this Epsom example. Next, on, uh, on my VS Code, I've set up some tasks to actually automate deploying to Cloud Run. And this is possible because in VS Code, we are able to, dis to, to define tasks JSON as a file with a command. So this is the label that's in this uh, quick run panel. And this is the command that's actually executed when I click that option. And also there is one for cloud build, which we will feature later. Now, when we need to deploy an application to, to, the, to the cloud, I prepared here a basic example of a Node.js application, which essentially 
prints hello world and uh, let's see how it works for it so in order to see how to deploy it let me grab this command manually first and using the terminal i am pointing this command here and essentially this means that uh, based on my folder based on my current folder it assemblies it zips the the all the folder contents which are in here as as you see on the left in the file explorer plane and it ships to the cloud when it goes to the cloud it's building out of a container in this example i have a docker file in this docker file actually i've chosen five lines of example minimum example to actually run a node.js application with a minimum setup these kind of docker files you can set up if you don't know docker they are very easy, easy to set up you find a lot of examples on the internet and if you are expert experts in docker file you can even build in multiple stages and only the compiled application is actually served by the docker itself and multi-stage multi builds are supported now what we have in the console because this command has just finished so essentially we have here that uh, the uploading sources have been completed that was packaging of the folder moving into the cloud building the container was actually uh, fulfilled this is the link if i want to see how the container was built and what's the underlying log messages from it identity access management which is actually uh, the command second part like allowing public allowing public traffic to my endpoint was set up there is also revision and traffic was routed to my example and this is the url and if i open it in the browser here we have our url hello world literally in a minute or a couple of minutes i was able to actually deploy all folder to to the cloud now if i want to actually uh, change here a message uh, hello world let's say here ddg cluj hello ddg cluj i can actually click here deploy i'm using now the quick ramp pane in able in order to actually get uh, to get the the folder up to the cloud and to actually feature the tasks uh, of vs code how easy it is to actually do this the same steps are going to run for it. It runs the container and it uh, it will ship it and it will automatically set the new revision because the new revision will be created. It automatically sets uh, as a serving traffic. So hopefully it's done. Setting I am policy, creating a new revision and routing traffic. And in a couple of seconds, hopefully it will let us to access the new revision of our application done good if i refresh this hello gdg cluj ah you see like a demo this is as a cloud run service now, inside the ui let me demo that as well inside the ui you are able to actually see the google cloud platform ui if you go to the dashboard you can use the search in order to get to this product which is cloud run and in the cloud run you are able to actually see my first example which is the demo one and uh, here you see all the advanced options of it you have the revisions you have the logs triggers and permissions as well for it okay let's go further let's go further because this was just a demo to actually see how we build how we run and how we see in the cloud so as i mentioned so far cloud run works also on a managed environment and also on your google kubernetes engine or even on premise as well that's called cloud run for antas but we will feature this presentation is actually featured on the fully managed uh, version of the cloud run. Billing model, paper use. 
why is important to understand how serverless applications are working and how they are built? Well, as you have uh, probably guessed, we have CPU, memory, and requests as a number of metrics. If we want four CPUs, eight CPUs, we can set in the Cloudrun service that we need that many CPUs for it. For memory as well, we can set up to eight gigabyte of memory per service. And requests are there, they are coming, and so on. Now, Cloudrun has a model that uh, they are billing the execution of, of the, of the let's say, instance. And it's built based on the overlapping time, which is very, very, let's say, welcomed. Because if you have two requests overlapping, you are actually paying the billable time of it. What's, what we have here more? So there is, let's say, the cold start, which for every serverless service, it's there. We will see how this is handled by Cloudrun and how we can uh, get uh, a weight of this uh, cold start later. The cold start is something that you don't uh, build. It could be something like 50 milliseconds, 300 uh, milliseconds as well. And literally, it depends how complex is your container. So if you have a container that's extremely complex, it could boot up, let's say, in three seconds. But actually, that's extremely complicated container you have a bunch of service with. For serving uh, instances and serving uh, web applications, the boot up is instantly offered. Then the request starts, and the green request actually finishes sooner. But then there is the second request, the red one, which uh, finishes later. And you see here the billable time is actually the over span of this. And it lets you to actually build only once the time and not twice for it. Also, then you have, uh, let's say, an idle phase that's not actually built, built for you. So it's extremely helpful for me, for example, these kind of uh, features, because when I have my first request, suddenly there are other requests as well inside the, for, for my container, like, let's say, CSS files, any other, let's say, dynamic uh, content and so on. And essentially, the whole loading is a single billable component and not individual for it. There is a table with uh, CPU, memory, and request. And there are also free plans. And free plans, there are some numbers for gigabytes and CPUs. But the interesting part is that 2 million requests per month are actually free. And then only 40 cents are for a million requests. And literally, this makes it ideal for low traffic application to have low billing as well or low cost solution for it. Essentially, you can run an application which has around 10 million requests with the small CPU and small memory footprints. You can run literally with 20, 10, 50 dollars of it, and that's actually an FSUM solution in the cloud as well. A lot of folks have managed to actually uh, have have managed to actually deploy services, hobby projects, all for free using CloudRun in order to get it going with this. Now, features that make CloudRun king of serverless compute. Let's dive into. When we talk about dependencies for a serverless service, we know that legacy function as a service solutions restricts you to use the tools provided. So essentially, the cloud vendor has a tool or it has a certain syntax to use. It has a certain, uh, let's say, version of the, of the programming language or the stack that you want to use. And it doesn't provide you anything else, only that thing. Now, CloudRun actually brings any flexibility because you can actually have all kind of 
let's say, uh, dependency and binary assembled inside your container. And it's your choice what kind of uh, outdated version you are using for your container or a new West alpha or beta or release candidate version you are using it. And it's regardless of language and runtime of your code. So just an example, under a node application, under a node runtime, you can run a useful Golang binary next to it, assemble it in the same application. It will be working together. They are actually fast uh, operation like that. Next is testing. Serverless tools make the promise of emulator, let's say prod compatible environment, but they fail to deliver this kind of emulator. There are all kinds of connectivity problems uh, or dependency resource management. And actually, it's actually hard to deploy and hard to manage this kind of emulator stuff, for example, in a CI CD environment. Now, containers make the test testing experience very consistent. This means that whenever a container is assembled in whatever environment, it's the same also on develop, in on, on dev and on production as well. Also, code and dependencies being packaged together. If you have worked in the serverless environment, you would figure out that sometimes uh, the dependency version, it doesn't work out for your application or uh, something that being packaged together, it has a different version that's not working out for you or suddenly there is an upgrade and your application, uh, it's, uh, let's say, uh, outdated or it crashes, uh, those kind of issues. Having uh, containers, Cloud Run actually results in a fewer works on my machine mo mo moment, which means that if you assemble everything in container and ship it as a serverless product, that works as it is also on your development station and also in the cloud. Traffic controls. Also in a serverless environment, serverless tools don't provide canally deployments or a subset of traffic to your functions, to your lambdas, whatever we name them. So you are essentially, you are able to, in the Cloud Run environment, you are able to allow traffic across revisions of a service. And you can label your services for gradual rollout strategies. So you could have, for example, labels like no traffic, which means that uh, the balancer, which automatically offered, and it's there for Cloud Run services, routes no real traffic to your service, but you as a developer or the CI CD pipeline are able to actually trigger that specific re revision to do the tests and to actually confirm this is production ready. And when it's, let's say, defines it's production ready, it automatically can roll out as a candidate and a candidate you can set up to get, let's say, 10% of the traffic. With 10% of the traffic there, you get it as a live example. You could monitor logs from your service. You could monitor, for example, error reporting or latency problems. And if you detect no problem, you could, for example, after two hours or 30 minutes, promote the candidate to the latest version. And that would be the 100% serving instance, serving revision of your application. It's an F some feature that you can fully automate. You can build out orchestration uh, programming models for it because these three steps uh, actually help you to faster deliver and be much more error prone with your application, uh, with your application development. Also, portability, I've touched this topic already when I mentioned Anthos. So function as a platforms are a vendor lock-in. It has a constraint on execution environment. You can only run on AVS or you can only run on Azure. You cannot move out from there. But nowadays, when you have containers, 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 it's actually your own environment. So you are able to choose and deploy everywhere. You can run, for example, even on-premise, on VM, on a cloud run, 
on Kubernetes, on GCP or AVS, Azure as well. So if you have the container, then you can run it everywhere and you result in a service that doesn't have a vendor lock-in, but I'm recommending to actually run the service in the cloud run environment. Practical use cases. Let's see how practical use cases answer some of the problems and why Cloud Run is the king of the serverless and rise of the serverless over containers. So when we talk about cold starts, we want to mitigate the cold starts as far as possible. You can, for example, achieve that by using a linear base image. You can choose Alpine distro less or even statically link binary inside your containers. You limit the number of uh, uh, services or a number of utilities in your container. You create a small container. Also be aware that a small container doesn't mean it's a fast container. So you should measure this and you should choose the best uh, for your application. Actually, in the, in the cloud run, it's actually easy to test out different distros for a different services and see how they work on memory, how they work on the CPU and on the latency as well. Then you have the way to actually use global scope. Often people ask me that when I talk about serverless, what, the, what this global means, because serverless would mean in their head that there is a request that's routed only to a single serving point. Here on Cloud Run, the container is booted up and it's serving multiple requests, the same container. If there is one single request, the container boots up, serves the request, and in a, let's say in a fan out period, it stops. But when there is a constant traffic to it, it hits many times that container. So essentially, we are talking about the serverless environment, but we serve multiple requests from it. So you are able to declare global variable, you can have a cache, you can reduce latency by using this kind of uh, optimizations. But we are introducing minimum instances. Cloud Run minimum instances lets you to define the number of instances that are there and it's waiting the traffic for it. So essentially, this is an Epson feature and the cost model is very, very good when it's having this idle phase of these minimum instances, it costs 10 times less than the regular price. So worth keeping there one or two minimum instances ready for the traffic. Minimum instances, it means that uh, whenever your application starts to get uh, the traffic, it's already there. It doesn't have the call start and it starts serving the traffic as it happens. What advanced way for this could, for example, be used by a company. When you have a campaign or a viral, let's say email marketing campaign, when you set up, send out a bunch of emails and in that email you have a, let's say landing page, which will get a lot of traffic. That landing page could be served by a serverless cloud run environment because it will get uh, a trending traffic and then it gets no traffic at all or only occasionally one, one, two opens. Idle instances could help you that before starting the campaign, let's say the campaign starts at nine, before nine, you could operationalize idle instances and you operationalize, let's say 10 instances as well. And as the campaign goes out, the instances are already there and it's waits serving the traffic for it. Once the campaign or the number of the metric that you actually monitor of it, you could reduce and you could take out minimum instances at all and be there as a regular, regular cloud on service. Minimum instances can be deployed in a different way as well. You have the 
with the gcloud utility in order to specify minimum instances you have the the ui to actually go manually work out it you can for example it can be part of a yaml sequence here you can have minimum instances as well and these are actually great for example the yaml way is great way to actually do by api and to actually orchestrate uh, setting of minimum instances based on your business logic, based on the traffic, based on the pattern that you want. And why not create uh, container services per cause, per campaign, per operation. And once they finish it, they are literally just stay idle. They don't uh, incur charges for you. So it's extremely versatile system for it. Now, when we talk about the other side, that there is a bunch of traffic to the containers, we need to discuss this a bit. This is called auto-scaling. So Cloud Run essentially scales down to zero, but also it can serve simultaneous traffic and uh, a lot of containers can be built uh, in concurrency mode, can be executed in a concurrency mode. So let's see what these are because uh, there are risks ahead here. So each service by default can start and spin up 1000 container instances. What's important to here to understand that each container, each additional container, it's a new CPU, it's a new gigabyte or a new RAM, whatever option you have, and it will incur uh, costs for you. Then we need to understand that each container instance can handle up to 250 simultaneous requests, which is actually a feature because it lets you to run web sockets ready applications, which need a lot of open requests, open uh, internet sockets as well. So essentially just the, just the basic uh, sum it lets you to run 250,000 simultaneous requests. So watch out what traffic you set up there because uh, this can actually turn out in a bad way if you have something uh, nasty around. When we talk about concurrency, function as a service frameworks usually have a fixed concurrency of one. You have uh, seen this also on Amazon, also on Google. This is a fixed concurrency of one. Cloud Run enables you to set concurrency. Default is 80, but can be increased up to 250, as I mentioned on the WebSockets feature just moments ago. Now, there are, what are the risks? Someone documented that there is a, let's say they ended up with the 72,000 bill overnight because their application went into a loop mode, they were attacked, they were DDoSed, and so on. So common errors, what people actually need to be aware and to fight on, on the cloud itself, it's a it's general way. For example, uncontrolled retries induce eventually loops. This could be based on failing tests and retrying the test. Or there is a missing back off, it immediately retries it should wait and it should have an exponential back off to retry this is something i see people for example ci cd pipelines when they actually doing the retry and they configure the retry for ic bad then there is the unwanted traffic the unwanted traffic is a domain where someone figures out the url or someone uh, uses in a in a let's say a live stream and uh, you, you get a bunch of traffic that you want to filter out if you are on a gcp platform you are able to use identity aware proxy to authenticate based on a segments on a schema the traffic and also cloud endpoint service for example this is good for api based termination and authentication termination because Cloud Run can be used also for mobile backends easily. And there you can have an endpoint service to, to feature the, 
the authentication and authorization of the of the request. Also, you can reduce concurrency. So by default, you have 80, but you can reduce the concurrency to only five or 10 and gradually increase as the traffic needs. When you have a DDoS issue, you can use uh, specialized uh, products for this, like uh, Cloud Airmore together with uh, an external load balancer with multiple backends for Cloud Run in order to reduce based on heuristics, uh, the number of traffics. And you could, for example, just with the touch of button, uh, signal it that I'm DDoS and the uh, ML behind the cloud armor will automatically filter out all the, all the traffic that's uh, considered uh, nasty. Let's see practical example with uh, a chart. So we have two two charts here. In the first one, we have here concurrency one. We have 400 clients. That's actually the 400 clients we will use on the right chart as well. And the request is three as a setup. Now, if we have a concurrency one for every client, there will be actually instanced a, a bunch of containers will start. So essentially, we will have 502 instances started because uh, it automatically detects the traffic is uh, increasing and it starts so many instances. For this is, uh, this is the left one. On the right one, we have a concurrency of 80 and the same instance it's serving multiple traffics for it. So essentially you end up here to only have 150 instance, instances started. Why is important to reduce the number of instances and 150 is better this time? It's better because you pay the CPU and the gigabyte of the instance while the request is there. So essentially, just by increasing and using the right concurrency value, you are able to reduce from 520 to 150 instances your your resources used in the Cloud Run environment. Of course, I get a frequent question that your container needs to fit inside the memory. So one instance of a container, let's name it, you choose 128 megabytes for a container as the basis of the gigabyte, and you want to route to that container 1000 uh, requests. It won't fit inside the 120 eight megabytes as that actually uh, running memory inside your container. So you need to use a higher containers as well. Good. When you use an external load balancer, you have a couple of options. And the external load balancer actually very easy to assemble is just connecting uh, your DNS to it. Uh, there is a given IP for the for the for the load balancer, and you point your DNS to it, and then you set up the backends for it. So essentially, the load balancer lets you to have a forwarding rule. You can have an SSL certificate termination. You can have a URL mapping in order to route to different backend services. Also. Uh, external load balancer out of the box offers you the closest the closest routing of the service so essentially if you have the same application set up for example in a europe zone and also the same application in a us zone you can route the user in oslo you can route with the balancer to your Europe instance of Cloud Run. And that's actually cheaper. It has lower latency, so it's easy to do. And this is by only dropping the Cloud Load Balancer in, and that way you can have Oslo to Europe service, New York to the US service. It's extremely helpful to actually deploy all these applications. Often people ask me why to deploy two times. Would, would that cost two times more? Actually not. Because as we have mentioned, the billing model is per request. So essentially the same request, wherever it hits on the, on the, 
on the zone or the region of the cloud, even it could be Africa, Europe, or Americas as well, it will be a request. And that means that uh, it will count and it's a billable component as it is. The future, in the future, it will be possible, for example, to have uh, automatic, uh, uh, how to say, uh, provisioning of the service, like you have only a template of it, and then you automatically provision in a different service. For that, nowadays, you have on GitHub a bunch of commands and Terraform example, how to deploy the same application to 20 regions, uh, like people do often. Let's see a much more complex demo, WebSockets. And uh, then after that, we will see conclusions. Good. Uh, so I'm, I'm back to my, my VS code. And let me demo right now for you another way to deploy applications. There is the possibility to deploy an application using a cloud build sequence. Cloud build sequence lets you to actually deploy up the same application into multiple zones. Here, for example, we have uh, three steps. One is that I need to build the container. This is uh, Docker build what's in here. Then I need to push the container to the registry. This is the Google Cloud Platforms registry. And then I need to deploy to Cloud Run, Cloud Run deploy, these steps. So actually these three steps define that my application is being deployed using uh, the cloud build is a name here actually for my container. Now, uh, Docker file is here. This is a different example like PHP and it only serves a simple HTML file. Now, in order to run this, there is a command which is extremely simple, gcloud builds submit. And let me see if I'm in the right folder because Maybe I, let me cancel this. Yeah, it's canceling. Let me see if I'm in the right folder. No, just no. Uh, cloud build, yeah. So I need to be in the right folder. Um, so cloud builds, essentially, it, it executes you a bunch of commands and a sequence of steps. It's extremely versatile. It lets you to run all kind of stuff for it and connect services of the cloud. <coughs> and if you want to, for example, deploy the same, same image into a different uh, zone, you can choose here, for example, to add additional, uh, uh, additional zones as well and the same image is actually deployed into two additional zones as well. Uh, what's happening here in the background, it's, it's actually already finished. So let's see where is our URL. This is our URL. And you see here, hello audience, and it's being deployed. Uh, so you essentially see here that the code is uh, creating a temporary tarball, then it uh, uploads to the cloud, then it starts uh, working on, uh, on the first step, which is the build phase. And then it builds the container as it was on local. Then it goes into step one, which is uh, pushing the container to the repository. Once it's done, it actually deploys to the Cloud Run service. So this is just a basic uh, example that you can use uh, Cloud Build as well. And now I wanted to actually showcase you a demo for WebSockets because people, um, people are amazed by the WebSockets and how easy it is to actually work with WebSockets. I've actually uh, cloned a repo socket.io and socket.io has in the examples, 
and they have a white board. They have a white board in the examples. And I will deploy that white board CD. I have here socket your examples white board. Yes. Now, what we need to understand here is that we don't have a Docker file. And we don't have neither a cloud build YAML file. It's really interesting so far, and I want to deploy this service to the cloud. Let's see if I got it uh, right. Uh, there is a special command for it. Let me first demo it. Hopefully, it will it will work. While it does that, CloudRun recently introduced an automatic detection of your stack. It's they are using, I think, Webpack for it in order to to run it. Let's see the logs. I'm grabbing the URL and I will bring up the logs for this build. And yeah, it's built pack. It's built pack. So uh, build pack is the one that detected what we need for this service. And here you have the logs for detection, like the build packs detected that we need Node.js. We need NPM and something utility label, which I don't know what this is. And essentially it finished. Wow, good. It finished. So now my console needs to pick up. Uh, yeah, good. So yeah, good. That's a, I'm very happy that I put together this demo. Hopefully now it will run because that pack example is straightforward from socket io socket io example and i don't have any change here i just literally cloned the repo i didn't put any docker file i didn't put any cloud yaml file here and i was able to leverage this uh, build packs feature of the cloud run now good let me see where is my url open and this is the url good and i can draw here let me reopen again have it twice come on i want it here and the other here and i can write here and you see here how it is working and this is actually what you need to understand that this is uh, This is web sockets. So whatever I draw in the one, it's by web sockets is being featured to my other client as well. So that actually concludes my examples for today. Let's go back to the presentation. Let's go back to the presentation. So if you want to run this demo, you can clone the socket IO, you go into the whiteboard example and you run this, uh, this command to actually run it. It will automatically deploy uh, the demo out of any changes and it's not necessary for it. Conclusions. I will be very, very quick here to address all your questions. So actually CloudRun brings you a and has developer experiment. So it has a simple UI and a simple command line options to actually deploy and manage services. You can build out automation in VS Code and everything else. It integrates with Cloud Code. Cloud Code is an extension for VS Code and it's essentially an, an IDE inside the browser. It can work out also from the console as well. Cloud build and other continuous deployments. It has out of the box scale down to zero and also scales to the sky limit and uh, the quota of the, let's say the zone, because in the cloud as well, they are exhausting uh, numbers that uh, could, could be reached. 
services are replicated the bulk multiple zones. You can do that. And out of the box, it offers HTTP endpoints. So if you have seen my examples, all the URLs were provided by CloudRun. They were HTTPS already. And also you are able to add your custom domains to it. To, you can use the interface in order to add custom domains. Yeah, you need to point your DNS to a specific IP range and it automatically is being picked up in five minutes by CloudRun. Enables invocation by HTTP2, WebSockets and gRPC, newer technologies that people often find difficult to run in serverless environment, also find difficult to run in a VM and so on. So essentially, this concludes my talk about CloudRun and some of the features uh, are here. Uh, there was a, bit, a bunch of announcement, Cloud Run change logs. Let me bring up something uh, here. So there were a bunch of uh, release uh, features released just now when Google I.O happened and uh, you can have for example here uh, you have binary authorization which is an extremely extremely useful feature for banks and financial institutions that actually uh, enforce you policy based deployment this is something that opens cloud run for this kind of uh, businesses also you have uh, encryption keys that you are able to set the customer managed encryption keys it means that you are able to set the encryption key and use that inside the inside the working with CloudRun as well, and uh, it's it's a bunch of uh, new options as well. CloudRun is available in Warsaw. It's very good for us because it's very closed and it has under five uh, milliseconds latency and all kind of uh, it, they have uh, billing improvements as well uh, for it. Now, thank you for having me here. And now let's see what questions we have. Thank you, Martin. So, yeah. yeah uh, thank you for uh, your interesting presentation. There are a couple of questions in the general uh, in chat. Good. Whoa, my chat stop sharing. Not stop sharing. Yeah, it's bad this way but i will i i can read for you yeah so uh, yeah. from uh, alin Boots, how do you create an infrastructure to use for services to call among themselves yeah so cloud run itself is a service and it's a cloud run service and Sorry. So I want to say that whenever you deploy a service, you have an option to actually choose if it's open to the public or it's not open to the public. Whenever you want to connect between uh, different cloud run services, probably uh, you want to deploy into a NAG. A NAG is a special endpoint groups and they are under the NAG, they can communicate between it uh, between the services. So you need to check out the uh, NAG, and uh, those that's uh, how you actually deploy uh, the serverless uh, netpoint network endpoint group. There is an article um, for that for that in order to run uh, the network endpointing group. Let me check where is the... Yeah, so essentially the article you will see, you, you, you need to locate setting up a load balancer with Cloud Run, App Engine and Cloud Function and the network endpoint group specif specifies how you deploy the same application into this uh, uh, networking group. 
Uh, also, I've seen this question, the first question, frequently asked on Stack Overflow. They may be practical answers under the questions as well. This is something that uh, people asked a lot about it, and uh, there was answers posted as well. Next one, Octavian, please. Next one is from uh, Rosman Britoyu. If you have a fine number of concurrent requests, for example, the maximum allow by default uh, 250,000 concurrent requests, does it still make sense to use Cloud Run for the backend or is Kubernetes a better choice? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. It's an interesting question because it depends on the business logic and it depends on the application side. And also it depends on the management. First of all, I would I would define is the if the management lets you to use Cloud Run for this kind of large service, because you don't know the costs before, you can just only estimate for it. Let's say in a financial institution, they are opting for Kubernetes for fixed hardware resources, even if it's scalable for it, but it's a fixed hardware resources and that they have the specific uh, billing uh, handled somehow. Otherwise, if I forget all this, what your organization lets you to do and help to run, otherwise there could be moments, campaigns, trendings, where there is unknown to you that it will be 250,000 requests there. And you don't know to run for Kubernetes or to run for, let's say, managed cloud run. There could be maybe a surprise to you that uh, you get a lot of traffic. You may be a user that doesn't have Kubernetes ready. They are only read about Kubernetes and they don't implement it yet inside their organization Kubernetes as well. For those, Cloud Run is a good choice and uh, it's a good choice to actually serve the legitimate traffic for it. Hopefully it won't be a DDoS experience and it will be legitimate traffic. It will be a billable, a serious billable amount on the bill if you have a large traffic for it, but you could be happy that the campaign, the trending stuff, it actually succeeded, it yielded a lot of results and so on. What my, what my uh, suggestion is that uh, there are so many APIs to monitor this kind of behavior that you don't need to open your application, your concurrency, your simu uh, simultaneous request handling to so, so big number, you can make it only a small fraction for it. And then as the traffic increases, you set up alerts like pager duty, whatever, and you exactly can go into the interface and you change the number literally whenever you have been paged that something is not working out, or you could set up webhooks that uh, certain services are not handled by Cloudrun. This is possible. And you automatically increase the number of uh, concurrency and the number of requests for it. Also, you could opt for uh, having a low profile and high profile service platform like you could opt for low profile, which means that only run 200 megabytes of RAM and high profile to run four gigabytes of RAM for an instance. And all automation can actually help you to decide that, okay, now I route my traffic to the 500 option or to the 200 option, or I route my traffic for the four, uh, four gigabyte of, uh, of option. So hopefully that answers your question. Octavian, next one. Uh, there is also still a question. If uh, Cloud Run is uh, suitable to deploy APIs that serve big deep learning models. 
Yeah. So this is very interesting uh, question as well. So let's see the limits here. Uh, the limits are that uh, currently right now we are able to run uh, on Cloud Run instances with 8 gigabyte and 8 CPU for it. And right now we don't have GPUs as far as I know. No GPU as well. Uh, of course, okay, next. The next limits are that execution are for 10 minutes. So, not sure what kind of serving do you have. Probably serving wouldn't take 10 minutes to, to actually happen it. But, uh, for example, you could uh, have some kind of long operation, maybe not big data learning uh, process for that. You could have a longer operation that runs for 10 minutes, but these are the current limits of Cloud Run platform that I'm aware of. Sorry, maybe I'm wrong as well, but I'm aware that these are the limits. When we talk about uh, deep learning models and machine learning as well, Google I.O., which was a couple of days ago, have launched a new service. It's called Vertex AI. Vertex AI. AI, sorry. Vertex AI. Vertex AI is similar as Cloud Run it is, but it's for machine learning problems, for machine learning tasks. Vertex AI is actually, let me show the menu at least itself. Go to console. I uh, actually have used it in a workshop as well. Uh, let me choose my project. This was mm, overall. Yeah. So Vertex AI is uh, something that similar to Cloud Run. So essentially, I'm going from the bottom to the top. Essentially, endpoints. Here, there is the endpoints. Endpoints is the what the container itself where it's similar to Cloud Run, like this is the HTTP based endpoint already trained, already has the model itself, and you only need to select send the input parameters to it in order to return the model's output for you, either a prediction or a recommendation or a time series forecast mm -hmm. or whatever similarity, mm -hmm. what what models you have there. Before having an endpoint, you need to have a model. Normally, the model is something that's either ready and you collect from the internet and you upload the model here, or you have a service that generated the model, built out, you have validated mod the model as well, and you upload it to here. It's very important that there are some format uh, requirements that you need to meet in order to get your models up here. But the three main uh, platforms like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and there is one more, it's already supported for, for uh, actually training the models uh, for, for this. Before the model, I'm going uh, the back way up to that. Before the model, there is the training process. The Vertex AI platform supports the training process as well. And here, for example, I had on a workshop a training process for, for an MPG that's Milestale Gallon uh, Neural uh, Recommendation Engine here. And that's the training as well for it. And before training, there is data sets. And data sets is actually the input for the training process. So essentially, Cloud Run is not the best platform, best choice for this kind of tax. Vertex AI is the good choice for this platform because if you start with a data set, then you are able to use, for example, even a notebook. You can train your service based on the data set. When the training finishes, you have a model. The model has the version, has the revision, everything that uh, CloudRun offers for a service as well. So it, 
it lets it lets you to actually have the same canary build uh, and uh, candidate and latest uh, solution for the model as well. And then when the model is there, you have the endpoints as well. And endpoints behaves like a instant HTTP endpoint where you could uh, do your machine learning uh, operation. There is also batch prediction as well, which is handful when you have a bunch of inputs, like 1,000 items, and you want to run for the batch prediction as well. Okay, then uh, we are a bit over time. So uh, thank you, Martin. If you have uh, questions, uh, please uh, write them directly to us or to Martin. Uh, at the end, uh, we'll uh, save the recording or our website, gdgclosure.ro, also on the website from the GDG community. On our website, we also have a survey. Uh, our next event is not planned yet, so uh, we are uh, wanting your opinion for our next subject. And I think that's it all. Thank you, Martin, and thank you, everyone, for uh, participation. Thank you for having me here. Uh, hopefully, we will see in an in-person meeting soon as well. And um, I'm waiting to share what kind of apps, some tools, or apps you are building using Cloud Run as well, and why not other services on the cloud as well. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.